Hello, good morning. It's Miriam here speaking. Hello, how are you? It's so good. Yes, after after the the eclipses in the United States yesterday. It was beautiful actually. I was following uh on the internet uh from one uh, site in uh, in there in uh, United States, and I was following also the information on B, uh, BBC. So it was really very interesting. It was really very beautiful. Uh, I remember when you had um, our one here in England in two thousand. If I don't know if you remember this, I was working on those days in. Um, Oh gosh, 17 years ago. <laughs> I was working in Chelsea. I was a housekeeping, uh, very powerful and rich man in, in, in there. And uh, I remember we come out uh, to watch the eclipse. Uh, it was a beautiful one also. Uh, but... Uh, it was not that dark like it was, uh, probably because it was very summer in here in, uh, when it happens um, in 2000. Um, I think it was all over Europe. So it was interesting, it was beautiful and I came out to see it. It was about midday, something like this. But it didn't got darker like uh, it happens in the United States yesterday. Uh, it was dark, but not that dark. Anyway, um, so yes, I'm I, I, I'm planning uh, to talk about something else today. I'm not gonna talk about the energy that this uh, the the moon and the eclipse moon raised it uh, some days ago. I'm not gonna talk about this the eclipse from the sun yesterday because a lot of people has been talking about it and I don't know how far it really uh, empowers us or if it really is, um, have a very big um, influence on our on our reality uh, the only thing I can say is beautiful uh, make you wonder uh, how much beauty that is around in the universe and this is very interesting yeah there is a lot of beauty up there that you are not able to see because you are too far from uh, the center of the galaxy um, but anyway there is a lot of beauty uh, more closer to the core of our galaxy and you are too far from this. You are one of the farther tails of our our uh, galaxy. So you, you are not able to see much uh, as probably uh, beings that live more closer to the galaxy center. But anyway, you have uh, uh, enough beauty around here. <laughs> um, so... I was talking in last video about the Ho'oponopono uh, that I'm doing for my uh, my my kids also, and uh, I come across Ho'oponopono about one week, no, two weeks ago, and that is um, a tradition in Hawaii uh, that is going from. <laughs> millennials it's um, so I don't know why it, I, it took so long to this information to come to me and it comes by random also I I was uh, someone uh, put it um, can't remember now oh I think it was um, in uh, yes no, it was in, uh, in YouTube. I was uh, searching for something in YouTube and this coming up. And then I look at it and say, hmm, that's very interesting. Um, 
so I started doing it because I was doing already some uh, rituals to empower my son and my kids, etc. So when I, I it come across, I saw, oh, I can mix the two together. So that's what I'm doing now. I mix these two rituals together so to have more energy. And oh my God, I can tell you, my God is so powerful. Oh, I have to be controlling my blood pressure right now because of this. <laughs> because it really is in power it's amazing when you mix that's that's what i think i came to to the planet to experiment in everything so now i mix two rituals together to make it more uh, you know more wow so yeah and it really is it really is so um the Ho'oponopono start in Hawaii, as I said, and it was a doctor, a psychiatrist doctor that uh, decided to, because he was not having, uh, he was not very successful on his experimentation with the mentally ill people that he was treating. So he decided to uh, do something different. And then he went to all the files of the, the people that were in, in his care and see what, what the main uh, issue of each of them. And then he started to do Ho'oponopono on uh, each of them, okay, each of the different uh, kinds. So probably he did like I, I did. Uh, as I said to you, I always uh, experimenting, okay. So what I did, I, I imagine that this doctor did in Hawaii many centuries ago was that uh, he probably, because if he had about 10, 10 uh, um, uh, patients on his, on his care, it was very, uh, it to take him too much energy to do each of them, because I'm doing for just two situations, is already taking my energy so much. So you, you can imagine do for 10 people. So I, I was wondering how he did it. So I come to one idea to myself because I have four kids, five grandchildren, two son-in-laws. Okay, so it's a lot of people for me to, and a partner. So it's a lot of people for me to concentrate in each other. I would be exhausted at the end of the day. I would not be able to do anything because as I said to you, you use... I use this one to do, yes? That is 108 here. So I have to I have to say the same words 108 times. So you can imagine say that for 12 people. Okay? I would spend all day long just doing it. Would be wonderful to be honest with you if I was able to sit here and do this all day long. I would never bother and I'm going to tell you why okay let me finish this uh, so to show you what I did so what I did what I come up I, my idea what I come up with was this one I'm gonna show you okay can you see there okay I did I put on this thing a photo of every one of my kids can you see it yeah yeah, I put the photos of them, okay, my kids and my grandchildren, and also, I, I oh, sorry, I put with one of myself also. Can you see? All my kids are there. So that's what I did. So I said, okay, I do like this. I put all the photos of them, okay, and... Um, I do a prayer for every morning before I do the specific one that I'm doing already. I do for every one of them at once. I say um, uh, to all my kids or all my, my children, yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is I am uh, liberating you, all my kids, I'm liberating you from any prison 
any mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, um, mentally prisons or that is imprison them. Okay, so I incl I put everything together. Okay, so I'm saying I, I am liberating you. I am freedom you guys, my kids, from all this mentally prisons all these uh, emotionally uh, attachments etc and then i do it about just about 10 times every morning before i do the specific ones when i finish the specific ones then i will concentrate more on all of them so i'm not doing the this one for all my family but i, I will start to do it when i finish the the other one the, the other two that I'm doing. I am going to finish in it uh, in uh, September because I'm going to finish it in uh, Lourdes. I'm going to travel to Lourdes in France and I'm, I'm planning to finish this Ho'oponopono on them or these rituals that I'm doing for these two situations in there. So when I come back from there, I concentrate this and then I will do the Ho'oponopono in Israel when I am traveling to Israel in October for my birthday, I decided to spend my birthday in uh, in uh, Jerusalem, in the temple. Uh, yes, I'm gonna be 65, so I think I deserve that. So I'll be by myself um, in Jerusalem. So I will do Ho'oponopono from there also, so you can imagine, it's gonna be fantastic. I will do a video, okay? <laughs> I promise I'm gonna do video in Lourdes and in in um, in, in uh, Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, so you see, sometimes you have to just allow the this higher self of yourself, the inner in a innate of you, to tell you what you should do to improve. And I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. That is a serious information that I'm gonna give you. We, when you have a knowledge of something, you are more responsible. Every time you gain some knowledge about something, that means you are going to be more responsible for using this information in the benefit of everyone that you are involved to. Do you know or do you remember or if you have heard about the parable of Jesus, the Galilee, about the talents? He he gave some of the of these parables, he gave some of these stories about the talents. He not just one, he gave uh, several ones in this matter because apparently this is very very important and very serious for every one of us so he said in all of them that like it's like the gaia the mother or god or whoever name you want the source gave to every one of us talents or gifts or what can I say? What other words I can put in here? Um, you are abilities, okay, to do things. Every one of us has abilities or talents or, or some uh, disposition to do something and some knowledge that you were born with, okay? This is something that we're born with. Some people play piano, some people is good in art, some people is good in talking, some people is good in nothing. <laughs> but you are always able to do something that you are good in it, okay? This is called talent. So when you are given something that is given you for free, nature gave it to you. So you have to use it in benefit of yourself and in benefit of people around you. Nothing in the planet, nothing in nature is wasted. Everything has a purpose. Everything has something to do. Some people is just to be there doing nothing, 
but when, in doing nothing, they are already helping something. You don't know because you, you are not, you, you don't have the eye, 360, uh, you know, of, of vision. You don't know anything. You don't know nothing. Our, you are, our knowledge is 00001% of everything that is in there. So we can judge people, even if they are like a parasites, you know living from other people you don't know why because sometimes some in some stage in some w one of these parallel lives that you have believing the other person that is is maintaining that third one is in debt with that one that is doing nothing and you you, you don't know so don't judge anything everyone has a talent everyone has something good Okay, so if I, Miriam, okay, was given so many talents, I am responsible more than someone that was given one talent. Do you understand? So as much knowledge I gain that drops in my lap like this Hoponopono, I'm getting more responsible in spreading it, in using it, because if I don't use it, I will be in debt with nature, with the source, with life. So if you are listening to this conversation that I'm doing, you are making more responsible for everything that you are listening. So if you don't want to be more responsible, stop listening to my videos. <laughs> And um, I was listening some videos on Sunday, and the guy was saying that uh, when he died, is one channeling, okay? So when he died, he was a healer. This person was a healer when he was alive, okay? He helped a lot of people. But when he died, he expected, when he was alive, he expected to be in a good place when he died. And when he did, he was taken to a place that she, he, he thought he, it was not the right place for him because he was a good man. He had done a lot of things good for people. So why he was in there? And it took him a long time to understand and to realize and accept that he didn't his best. He was there on this place called Limbo because he was supposed to go to the extra mile and he didn't because all the knowledge he had it was to help other people not just some people that he liked it or some people that was easy to treat to understand he was he was actually requested to do more than he did to go to the extra mile and if you know the story of the extra mile, you are going to understand why sometimes you are in depth with nature, in depth with Gaia, because you didn't work or walk the extra mile. When Jesus was in this planet, in, in Israel, Israel was uh, a slave of Roman, okay? A slave like you know they were in power of uh, the Holy Land so people from Israel was very upset the Jew was absolutely mad about the situation they want to be free from Roman but Roma you would never allow it to happen so they had lots of soldiers living in Jerusalem on those days and the soldiers they were very nasty and they forced the Jewish people, the Israeli people, to carry all the luggages that they were supposed to carry, but they didn't want to 
carrying this luggage. So they forced the Israeli men, the Jewish men, to carry their own, you know, luggage and things like camping, etc., on their back. And they forced them to go one mile, okay, or two miles or three miles, carrying this stuff for them. The Jewish was doing it because they were forced, or they were, they would be killed, or they would be beaten, etc. So they were afraid and they didn't want to suffer, so they carried this um, stuff for them. But they, when they did it, they were behind it because they have to walk behind, okay, with all this luggage on the, on the soldiers in the front, and they were walking behind. So they were carrying it, but they were spitting on the floor, on this, on the place they were, you know, the soldiers had been stepping their feet. They were spitting it and, you know, cursing them, etc. So, one of the people on the crowds that were following Jesus asked Jesus what he thinks about the situation. It was right for the Romans to force them to carry for one mile the luggage. And then, do you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, look, if they force you to go one mile, you go the mile with them because they're forced to go. And then when they said, now let uh, you, uh, another one carry my luggage, you're going to look at the soldiers and they're going to say to the soldier, no, sir, let me carry it another mile for you. It's my pleasure. And that's what they mean walking the second mile. You do it because you are grateful to be serving. I know it's very, very hard, but Jesus was breaking all the rules of the ego. That's why he was so blessed in doing everything that he did. Look, uh, let me say something to you. I'm not a religious person, and I don't believe that Jesus is a savior. I don't. I think he was a great man, a prophet, like Muhammad, like Buddha, like uh, Dalai Lama like Moji, like Kryon, you know, but uh, he did his, he, he did his job and he did unto the end and he did, he, 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 he would, he would, um, sometimes I said that uh, uh, in my, in my mind, I always thought Jesus was a suicidal person because he had the chance to flee and he didn't. He would run away if he want, you know, because he was a walker. He can walk away and go and didn't be killed or trying to kill him or suffer so much as he did because I don't think he was killed. I think uh, somehow he survived that uh, ordeal. But um, it's amazing, you know, that uh, he did it. He went through all this suffering just to prove that uh, his words was not just his words. It was what he was really in inside himself. And I think he survived that war, though, and, uh, because there is a lot of tradition that has said that he went to India. So it's probably true. Well, uh, so that's what means uh, go second mile. And that's what means when you are responsible for something, you have to go extra mile. So when I am doing it, when I'm making my brain work in my favor and the favor of the people I love, I am going my extra mile. I, you know, as a mother, I should, you know, I, I, I was, I, I had, I have the option to do nothing, just go to the church, uh, you know, on Sunday and light a candle for each of them, and that's it, done my job. But 
I, I have the knowledge and I, I don't have just the knowledge of what I should do, but I have the knowledge that if I don't do, I will be in a complicated situation after my passing. And I don't want that. I want to finish my job. I would say tikkun, but I, I can't... I can't say that to my job because it's not a tikkun. Tikkun is uh, um, something that you have to pay back. Um, but I don't think it's, it's in that matter. I think I, it's not a paying back. It's what my talent is. And um, there is lots of other talents, you know, other talents, uh, um, uh, is histories about uh, when uh, nature, Gaia, God, Source give to you and uh, is expecting you to do not what you did, but more. Okay. Not just what it's expecting you to do, like protecting your kids, uh, clean your house, etc. But, you know, some people is clean the house, but just on the middle and forget the corners. Or, you know, take things, but forget the, 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 the um, spider's webs around the house. Or swiping the floor and put underneath the carpet. It's not a good job. It's not doing your best. And I have been talking about it in another videos also, you know. So, yes. Ah, Ho'oponopono. When, when I remember the Ho'oponopono, yes, you say whatever you want to happen, and then you say, I'm very sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. So, use this, okay? And last time, when I finished my, my, my video, the time was not very, very uh, good, so I have to, to finish it very quickly on this card, remember? on the the full card when i was talking about it and uh, the transformations you you are you you are facing now the shift is and the you know the new that you have to build and then i the last card i took it was the full and the full means exactly it the beginning of something the innocence you know um i have a grandson the, the baby is there. Is there my, my he's nine months and he's already doing his first steps walking. Um, yeah, very yeah. Children today are very fast. Uh, so he is like a fool. I was another day they were here in my house and uh, and uh, he was. He decided to walk from one sofa to the other. <laughs> if you are not around him, he will be falling on the floor because he thought he, he can fly to one or another. And he put his, you know, his body like on the air to go to the other sofa. Uh, you laugh a lot. And then I look at my daughter say, you see, this is what fool means. <laughs> the innocence, they think that everything is working in their favor. And do they step? But us we protect our kids from falling our guides protect us from us to fall so don't be afraid and start something new don't be afraid on a step on the cliff because you are you are, you are protected like we were caring for our baby inside my house, the guides, your guides, your soul group, your mentors, your innate, your higher self is around all the time to protect you also. So you can you can go from one sofa to another without, you know, with the gap between without falling. Because they are they are with you all the time. So don't be afraid of going. Don't be afraid of starting something new. Take the advantage of this moment. It's August, September. Everything is falling down, okay? 
Oh, everything is falling down, falling down, falling down. But it's for us to build on top, to make it better. So let's make it better. Let's make it better. Can you see my nails? Oh, like this. Do you know why? Because I am doing some experimentations and I'm doing my own um, um, lavender uh, essence and my rose essence. So when I am, uh, because when you do it, you have to do about three, four times so to make it strong. So when I'm uh, taking the, the, the tin tincture that I did and putting another one, they are very dark, you know. Yeah, there is. A, you you do it yourself if you want it. Um, is you have to to have a special um, alcohol to do it. So you have to do many times because the alcohol is too strong. So uh, they smell. So if you don't do about three four times, then it's not gonna be strong enough. The lavender or the roses, you know, essence. So when I am um, exchanging it, um, that to make my nails like this. <laughs> I don't bother, it's going to come out anyway. And I have to take the advantage, advantage of the spring and summer for the lavender and for the roses. Okay, love, my time is, is running. I hope uh, this video has been uh, very good for you and very uh, is a lot of inspiration for you to follow. And um, God bless you. I, I, I put this one here, but I'm not going to have time to use because I was talking too much. Look, <laughs> I love it. I I I am always work with uh, of them. I have two here. I was gonna show you the two different ones, uh, but uh, they do a very good. Look, both of them are now saying yes. They are very happy to be here anyway. So God bless you. Keep you safe, and uh, let's talk again. If you wanna contact me, uh, my my website is gonna be at the end, okay? Okay, bye bye. God bless you. Keep you safe and me also. Bye bye.